Greetings students. Today we are going to learn about one of US's leading apparel company TJX. Let us know this company in a much better way. The TJX Companies Inc. is the largest international apparel and home fashions off-price department store chain in the United States. Based in Framingham, Massachusetts, the company originally evolved from the Zara Discount department store chain, founded in 1956, which opened its first branch of TJ Maxx in 1976 and its first BJ's Wholesale Club in 1984. In 1988, Zaire sold its nameplate to rival Ames and TJ Maxx renaming itself to the TJX Companies Inc. Since 2004, the company's chairman has been Bernard Camerata. Headquarters is at 770 Cochituet Road in Framingham. Stanley Feldberg was one of the 1956 founders of Zyre Corp. He served as president of the company until 1978 and afterwards remained on the board of directors until he retired in 1989. Once the company had sold off the Zyre name, the company consisted of its one core remaining store brand TJ Maxx. The next year, in 1990, TJX expanded into an additional store brand division and at the same time, it first went international as it entered the Canadian market by acquiring the five store winners chain. Two years later, it launched its third brand, Home Goods, in the United States. TJX's expansion beyond North America came in 1994 when the fourth brand division, TK Maxx, was founded in the United Kingdom and then expanded into Ireland. In April 2008, TJX launched the HomeSense brand in the UK with six stores opening throughout May. The brand is more upmarket than its Canadian namesake. Later that year, in August, TJX sold Bob's stores to Versa Capital Management and Crystal Capital. In December 2010, TJX announced that AJ Wright stores would be closed, cutting about 4,400 jobs and that more than half of them would reopen under other company brands. To this day, nobody knows what the initials TJ stand for. Our business is truly about our customers and giving value to our customer. We positioned ourselves as a global company and we've been building that. So we really are, in good times or bad times, we offer everyday value to the customer. And that's what we're all about. It's a great place to work. It's a stable company. It's a growth company. And the formula for our business is actually very fresh. I'm Chris Greenfield and I'm an assistant store manager. The goal is door to floor in 24, and we have to do that every day. It's great because it helps me to be a real merchant. I'm Andrea DeCourcy, and I'm an assistant store manager. It is fast paced, it is flexible, it's enjoyable because at the end of the day, you can put your finger on what you were able to move. I'm Carlton Ayer, Vice President, Leadership Development. We take merchandise right off of the receiving truck, and it is priced to sell the minute we put it on the floor. I learn something every single day, whether it's how to merchandise something to make it work better, how to fixture something better, how to interact with customers. I started in 1987 as an assistant store manager. I was fortunate enough to have been a good performer throughout my career, so that performance was recognized and so I was promoted. If someone is doing well for the company and they have an interest in staying with the company, we have opportunity for them to expand. People skills is probably the most important quality because you would have to deal with both the associates that are under you, your peers, and the customers. TJX views the store personnel as very valuable to them because after all the buying is done, if we don't get it to the floor, it doesn't make any difference. 
they really allow you to use your own creativity. They give you a lot of room to explore and work with the merchandise. We don't say, look, this is how we've always done it here, so that's how you're going to do it. We say, tell us what you bring with you and tell us how that can help us do business better going forward. I spent my entire life working in retailing and TJX as a company definitely cares about the people that work for them. TJX is a great environment to work in. It's people oriented, it's family oriented, it's secure. It's a regular schedule, we rotate weekends. As a working mother, it's great for me. It's a healthy company, I know it's going to be around for a very, very long time. We are established, we are strong, both financially and with talent. You can come to work every day and work in a team environment and just see retailing in its purest form and have fun doing it. I don't know if I can put it in any other terms. It's just fun. On January 17, 2007, TJX announced that it was a victim of an unauthorized computer systems intrusion. It discovered in mid-December 2006 that its computer systems were compromised and customer data was stolen. The hackers accessed a system that stores data on credit card, debit card, check and merchandise return transactions. The intrusion was kept confidential as requested by law enforcement. TJX said that it is working with General Dynamics, IBM and Deloitte to upgrade computer security. Eleven men have been charged in the theft and one Damon Patrick toy has pleaded guilty to numerous charges related to the breach. One man, Jonathan James, professed his innocence and later committed suicide apparently out of the belief that he was going to be indicted. The alleged ringleader, Albert Gonzalez, was indicted in August 2009 with attacking Heartland payment systems in which 130 million records were compromised. On February 11, 2000, the company restated the quarterly sales and earnings of 1999. There has been a huge break in the TJX scandal that resulted in millions of people's personal information being compromised. It seems that authorities have singled out a Ukrainian man that they believe played a major role in selling many of the credit card numbers that were stolen in the scandal. Officials are hoping that this arrest will help them to follow a trail back to those that were responsible for stealing the information in the first place. Apparently, this Ukrainian man had sold the credit card numbers on online forums that are hosted overseas. This information was sometimes password protected or written in Cyrillic and the stolen card information was sold for anywhere from $20 to $100. Authorities have stated that this man was most likely responsible for the majority of the cards that were sold. In fact, he sold some of the cards in batches of 10,000 cards at a time. Whether or not the cards were put into these large batches was largely dependent upon the credit limits on the cards. Authorities are not sure as of what, whether or not the Ukrainian man was the mastermind behind the security breach. Although the man was actually arrested several weeks ago, authorities are only now saying that he is being connected with the TJX breach. The man had originally been arrested by Turkish police, where police officials said he was one of the world's most important and well-known computer pirates. Beyond this information, officials are being very tight-lipped about the arrest. TJX isn't talking and neither is the Secret Service or the Justice Department. The only thing TJX is saying is that the company expects to have to pay a whooping $256 million to cover all of the expenses of this breach. This will include bulking up security and dealing with all of the lawsuits the company is facing. 
Some analysts disagree, however, saying this breach will ultimately cost TJX more than $1 billion. So students, we went through the company's history to its present market scenario. Hope you must have got useful information about the company. Have a nice day. Goodbye.